Hey Gundam fans, welcome to another episode of Gundam Explained. For this video, we're going to talk about Rise from the Ashes 0079. This started as a game on the Sega Dreamcast that came out in, uh, I believe, 99, 2000, I think 99. But it also saw the, the story being told in other games, uh, Saturn game, Gear and Greed, um, and even the, the re-release on PS3 where they took all those side story games, kind of remastered them. You know, for me personally, this is the first Gundam game I ever played. I played it when it first came out on the Dreamcast. Did not even know it was Gundam. I just kept referring to it as Side Story 0079. I probably wasn't even saying Double O. I don't think that really came about until I saw Mobile Suit Gundam, the original, and how they referred to the the years uh, in you see as Double O, whatever. But yeah, I remember playing it back on the Dreamcast thinking it was an amazing game. I want to even say I played through it multiple times just because I thought it was just a solid experience and then just... After that, I would always recall that game, but never think of it as Gundam. I always just searched Side Story 79 whenever I wanted to look up something about it. But now getting into Gundam and looking back, it's pretty amazing that this is a pretty cool story uh, that came out of Gundam. It further supports my enjoyment of Gundam and everything Gundam related. Hey, but before we get started and diving deep into the story and everything, if you haven't, please subscribe and like the video if by the end you think it's pretty cool. And, and don't forget to check out the giveaway. There's a link in the description for a video to watch, to comment on something you'd like to win. There'll be two winners. And the original game is very cool. Cockpit view, which is not seen too often in Mobile Suit Gundam, but uh, very cool. And one thing I want to call out is really how cool the music is. When I played SD Generation Genesis and was playing the missions uh, from Rise from the Ashes, the theme song just came back to me and I had a flood of feelings from back when I played it before and just loved the game. So yeah, the soundtrack definitely holds up. So what is it about this Rise from the Ashes? Okay, so this takes place in Australia in the late period of the One Year War. Some of the previous side stories we were talking about, kind of going chronologically, were in the European theater. This is in Australia. Um, this is kind of around the, you know, the aftermath of the colony drop. The Federation has the Torrington base. The idea here is since the Zeons lost California base, they wanted to escape uh, through Australia. They had some HLVs they were going to use for escape. Um, they even called it like Operation, uh, let's see, uh, Staircase to the Moon. So I grabbed some pictures of that. I guess it's a real phenomenon over there in um, Australia, I think in the, uh, the Northeast where... Uh, just looking out into the ocean, the moon at a specific time of year makes it look like there's a staircase. The reason they called it that, though, was the idea was when Xeon had to escape Earth, um, they were wanting the Federation to think that, you know, they would be flooding out, you know, to escape Earth when really a lot of them were running to Africa to hide. And that becomes pivotal in the future of Mobile Suit Gundam, as in 0083 Stardust Memory, New and Bitters forces other to help Enneville Gato escape with the GBO2. And then when we get into Double Zeta 2, there are some conflicts that occur um, in Africa as the characters are passing through. We get to Unicorn, and we see where some remnants of Xeon are actually there in Africa. But White Dingo, so in Australia, this group, the White Dingo EF Army Australia, is a, a group of GMs. So remember, at this time also, that the Federation was early in mobile suit production. They had Operation V that had the gun can and the gun tank and our favorite Gundam. But also, um, later on in the war, the GMs started being mass-produced. And then they had a special unit that they called White Dingo. One of the main pilots of White Dingo is Master Pierce Rayer. Now, I don't know if he is a master or master's his first name. Either way, that is pretty cool, whatever the case may be. But um, from Giren's Greed, Blood of Xeon, which is a sequel to the Giren's Greed strategy games. This one was on Saturn. They had some animation cells uh, animating some of the characters, which I think was pretty interesting. But here we get, you know, a good look at this character. Another member of White Dingo, Liang Li Fai. And here we see a character, not too much information on him. But again, these are side stories that tell a very specific story. And they haven't really been talked about too much anywhere else. Maximilian Berger? Berger? Um, another character, not too much uh, information on him. And then another char a character we don't hear of much, Anita Julian. Uh, she's the operator that works with them. She's actually seen in the animation in the Giren's Greed game. Um, but other than that, not much information about her. So within the White Dingo group is, uh, again, these GMs or these mass production mobile suits that are modified with the White Dingo look. So we have this GM, 
looks awesome. I like how you can go to the Gundam Wiki when you look up a specific unit, being the RGM 79 GM in this case. You can then scroll through the different variations. And here we go, the white dingo colors. Very cool. GBO2, it's available. I, I want to say that it also has the decals that you can unlock for it to kind of recreate that look. And then we have the RGC80 GM Cannon, again, with the white dingo colors to kind of get a look of that. Here's the RGM79 SPGM Sniper 2. A very cool one, a fan favorite here, but also, um, again, with the white dingo colors. Here's the RX-77D Gun Cannon Mass Production Type in white dingo colors right there. Love the double barrel uh, shoulder, shoulder cannons. I like the the updated look versus what we saw in the original Mobile Suit Gundam with the gun cannon. Always appreciate that. All right, and so the Azeon pilot playing as the antagonist here is Vish Donahue. He piloted an MS-14G Gelgu ground type. Here it is, um, his custom right here, and we have his sort of uh, emblem decal that he uses. Also, he was in an MS-07B goof, and this is his custom. Um, very cool looking, kind of reminiscent of White Dingo with the lighter colors in the blue, even though it's Xeon and opposing them, but still very cool. Goops are always awesome. Now, I, I referenced uh, the Flail Throughs YouTube page to kind of get this link just to show more detail on what was going on uh, on the Australian front. The teams are divided up in three. They had the green Akinda going north, the red possum, um, let's see, in the middle, and yellow Coca going south to Adelaide. And so the idea was... Um, once the Red Possum was completed with their objective, they then split up to meet with the other teams uh, to help them with their objective. Basically, trying to just take out the rest of Xeon that was in Australia, and by using this tactic to spread out, it made it appear as if the Earth Federation forces were spread, uh, were spread around Australia. A very interesting thing here has to do with the uh, Astaroth. The Astaroth was a project developed by Xeon scientists in California base Really, the whole idea was to kind of increase uh, crop production being on the colonies, but it had an interesting side effect on Earth that it was it was causing uh, crops and, and trees, for instance, to just grow at a rapid pace. It would be so rapid that it would take over and suffocate life on the Earth. It wouldn't allow room for other organisms to grow and thrive. It would take over the resources and everything. And so their plan was Xeon scientists had left California base, went to Australia to get to the HLVs to take off. And, you know, White Dingo had to stop them. And the Astroth uh, used as a weapon at that point was in one of these HLVs and it was taken out before it could leave Earth. So a kind of a cool little tidbit of information there that while all this was going on, there was this bioweapon that perhaps was going to be unleashed on Earth and could have totally decimated Earth, uh, allowing the colonies to win. And another interesting thing, I, I uh, mentioned that remake earlier that was released on PS3, um, and it looks very good. It looks like it uses kind of that GBO2 backbone to it. It's third person, though, instead of being first person in the cockpit. But it looks really good. It looks like something I'm going to want to have to play. Again, I tried emulating it. It's um, a little choppy, so eventually I'll just have to try to reacquire a PS3 and then import that game and you know, be able to play these side stories. All right, so that's it with a brief overview of what is about Rise of the Ashes, uh, the side story in 0079 that, that takes place during the One Year War, after the European Front, closer to the end of the war, and in Australia. So we got to see the White Dingo team. Uh, the mobile suits that they used, which are a, a bunch of customs, which is really cool. And also we saw Vish Donahue uh, from Xeon with his customs as well. But if you have any other information you want to bring up about Rise from the Ashes that I may have missed or anything else I need to cover in the future, um, yeah, just let me know. But uh, yeah, like the video if you thought it was cool and subscribe if you haven't. But uh, we'll talk later.